This is going to be the very first ever here is what sold video I've ever done in my life. I've done a lot of eBay training. Many eBayers do this on YouTube. They're very popular. They get a lot of clicks, which is why YouTubers like to do them. I don't like doing them because I want this channel and the other training that I've done in the past, I want it to actually be improving your eBay skills. Here is how to make more money selling the things that... Now, that includes not just how to do eBay the right way, the, advanced, the ultra advanced way, but it also includes showing you things to source that are items that other people don't generally walk to whenever they see them. They go somewhere else. That's usually where a lot of money is. But I just realized in wrapping things today that sold yesterday, I just realized that you actually can learn quite a bit, and I can teach you a lot about sourcing whenever it comes to looking through some of the things that, that I sold yesterday. So I wanted to do that for you with the added benefit of, I don't really care if you see what I sold. That's not the point. I'm not going to do tons of these, but you're going to learn a little bit about sourcing some advanced stuff whenever we we do these types of things. So here we go. Let's just see how it goes, okay? If it doesn't go well, you won't see another one. First thing that is up is a Longa Burger, Little Love Wrought Iron Stand Shelves. Keep in mind, the title is only for the search engine. The title doesn't need to be a full sentence. It shouldn't be a full sentence. You should only have keywords in your title that grab that search engine. So when anyone searches for anything like this, then your search is going to come up in the search. You've heard me talk about Langeberger before. Langeberger is primarily known for their baskets. They're no longer in business. They also did. They also sold a lot of pottery, Langeberger pottery items, and they also sold a lot of wrought iron items. Now, the wrought iron items generally are pretty good sell. Well, they're all good sellers, especially the baskets and the wrought iron. The pottery, I find to be a mixed blessing. A lot of times you can find some really good Langeberger pottery. A lot of times, not so much. The, if you can get them in the original boxes, it's even better. But the wrought iron, anything with wrought iron, that's black iron that usually is designed to hold baskets because they want to sell baskets as well as the wrought iron. This, If you can find those, that's a good thing to try to resell. This one, I didn't have a box or anything. It wasn't new, but it's along a burger. It's a wrought iron, just a little stand. It, it, it's only about a foot and a half high. I probably should have taken a picture of the actual items. I know it's hard for you to actually see what this is, but that's okay. But I wanted to show you that, hey, if you can find wrought iron and baskets and along a burger, even better. So that's a bolo to look for. Be on the lookout. I'm going to upgrade, update the group's bolo document to tell you about Langenberger, if you don't know anything about the group's BOLO document, you should go to the Ultra Advanced eBay guy on Facebook. That's our group. It's free of charge. Just click to join. No big deal. You can quit any time. It's not a big deal. But that's where we have our document that is creating a huge BOLO, be on the lookout list, for you to find things that most people aren't looking for. Langenberger wrought iron items is one of those things. So this is a little tiny foot and a half high double little basket thing, not very wide or anything, and it sold for 54, 5104. Now let's go down to the next item. Now this is a graphic novel. Now how do you know the difference between a graphic? If you open the pages of a graphic novel, it's going to look like a comic book. How do you know the difference between a graphic novel and a comic book? Well, if an adult buys it, it's a graphic novel. If it's a comic book, eh, adults and children can buy it. But this is an adult novel from 1986. I am selling for the widow of Dale Crane. He was a DC Comics editor for, for several years, and he did a lot of work on independent comics as well. He passed away. She's got all her stuff, and I'm selling his collection. Have been for a long time now, selling it for her on consignment. This is one item from there, 1687. Not a big seller. When you sell on consignment, it's even less. 1687 is even less, but it's easy to ship. You just slide it in a bubble wrap. You should keep these types of things in mind that do I want to sell something for under $20 on consignment? Well, how easy is it to ship? Now, today I got it from one of my consignment clients for vintage jars in boxes with all of the liquid still there, still sealed, still sealed, still sealed Avon for Avon products. And they were these old vintage cars like Studebaker and Tractor and all these things. They looked really cool. And the moment I saw them in the box, I thought, I'm not selling that. Avon products generally don't do very well. 
you shouldn't waste a lot of time with Avon. So I could have sold those four items probably for $20 altogether, and then I gotta wrap four completely full items of Avon. I don't wanna do that. Now this is a good consignment customer. It's very difficult for me to say no to customers who have given me things to sell. So this lady, Mrs. Del Crane's widow, when she gives me something that's gonna sell under $20 and I've gotta split the profit with her, I still will generally do that because she, I've had so many amazing things from his collection, many things, autographs, sign, notes to him from Stan Lee on these one-of-a-kind types of items. And so I definitely will, for her, sell things that are a little bit less money. And you should always consider this whenever you're deciding. But another consignment client who's given me a lot of great things to sell, including a huge, valuable pocket knife collection that I've sold over the last two years. I'm almost done selling that. I only have really cheap little knives left. Now, why would I sell a really cheap knife out of his collection when I don't have time to even sell all the mountain of things that I've got to sell as is. It's because he gave me a lot of high-end knives. I'm definitely going to work with him and sell as many of his things as I can. A little pocket knife, I think I've got one for sale for $7 right now. I had it higher, but it's not selling, so I'm lowering the price a little bit. I'm not a big pocket knife expert. I'm a I'm a moderate, small to moderate expert on pocket knives. And it just wasn't really worth selling. It'll probably sell about $6. Why would I mess with that? I can throw it in a poly bag or a bubble mail, little tiny bubble mailer, seal the flap and send it. It's not fragile or anything. So I definitely will help him by doing that. But that same man, he and his wife, they gave me those four Avon bottles. I'm not shipping them. I'm not going to mess with those. That will be under $20 with a lot of work, and you know what's going to happen. One of those bottles is going to break in transit, and it's going to have all that Avon, Avon perfume and get over everything, and the post office is going to hate me, and, and you need to send something like that by ground because that's the requirement. You can't send like products like that by air, priority mail, or anything like that. It's just not worth the risk. And you, what you have to do with products like that, see, this is why I like this sort of thing is I can teach you things along the way. You need to wrap it in. You need to seal them up in bags so that if they do break, the liquid has very little chance of spilling out outside of the box. And I do a bag within a bag within a bag, you know, uh, you know, a, a sealing clear bag and then inside another sealed bag and inside another sealed bag and then bubble wrap everything very well and double box everything. Well, for $20, I'm not doing that. For $7, I'll throw a pocket knife in a little poly mailer, bubble mailer, and ship it out for a man who's given me a lot of high quality items. So that's kind of where I am with this. If this were my own, would I have bought this for a dollar or two and sold it for $16.87? Oh yeah. Would I have sought after a consignment client for this item that's going to sell for under $17? No. But it's a consignment client that gives me a lot of high-end things. One of the next things that I sold, it's another Longa Burger. It's a Longa Burger that is interesting because it wasn't made by Longa Burger. It was made by Skybound. Skybound is a company that is famous for making hot air balloon figures. These are glass and types of figurines and all sorts of resin figurines. Very beautiful hot air balloons that they make for a lot of different companies and uses. Well, they made one for Langeberger, and it's this hot air balloon lifting a basket. It's not a basket. The, the Langeberger company headquarters, before they closed, they actually were in the shape of a basket. And so this is a pretty special thing for Langeberger collectors that this company called Skybound made for Langeberger. So for $50.87. The reason I liked it is that Skybound is a keyword. That's the company that makes these that people look for and collect. Langeberger is a keyword that people look for and collect. So this had a very good chance of selling. Now, the fact it was a limited edition and only 500 were made, that helps it even more. This sort of thing wouldn't generally sell for much, $20, $25 even for collectors. But when they're only 500, you can get 50 for this sort of thing. So keep in mind, if you can get two name brands in the title, the title is there to be found in the search engine, then you're doing really well. You have a double chance of selling something. Next item, this is a, it's not a meta, it's, 
I started to say a medical device. You need to be very careful about selling anything medical on eBay. eBay is very cautious about that sort of thing. And if you sell anything that requires a prescription, they're going to take it down if they find out. Now, this doesn't require a prescription. It's a gel liner for a special leg purpose, and it's brand new, never been opened. I happened to run across one, and I saw it would sell for about 80 bucks, and it did, so for exactly $80. I think I listed it for 90 took an offer for 80 something like that. If this were anything like a prescription, if it were anything related to, you know, the China virus that they all those years ago and ruined all of our lives with, that is something that you need to be careful about if you're selling masks or something like that. eBay is still very cautious about that. They, they really don't like you selling anything related to that thing that was back there because, because they don't want to be accused of profiting off a so-called pandemic. And so you need to know that going forth, that type of thing is very cautious. You need to be very cautious and probably not try to cash in on a current medical thing going on because eBay just is cautious. They don't want, for instance, if you happen to have one of the few nice quality, I'll just say air masks available and you're selling them for $100 a piece, eBay doesn't want CNN, that's the one who would be doing it, of course. They wouldn't want CNN to be on the air saying, eBay's making huge money off people, off these masks that people really need. And that's why eBay, really it's reasonable for eBay to anything really in the news when it comes to something medical, eBay really wants to stay clear of it if they can, because they don't want to be on CNN being bashed as someone who's just trying to get things into people's hands, which is literally all it is is supply and demand. So you need to be careful. This is something that has nothing to do with anything in the news, Some a very limited niche product, and it's not a prescription. So I didn't mind selling it. I didn't hesitate to sell it. Keep that in mind for anything even close to medical products. Next item was a watch. This gentleman who has been letting me consign his nice pocket, pocket knives gave me this Seiko men's watch to sell, and it was running, you wind it, it was running, it was clean, it was nice, and so it sold for about $93. That was a nice sell, easy to ship. You have to kind of bubble wrap it nicely, of course, because you don't want it broken. You don't want the crystal broken. The crystal is that clear item on the watch face, but it was a good sell. Harley Davidson Chrome, the, the way I first started consigning, and the way I learned, this is the best way to do consignment. If you need things to sell, tell all of your elderly neighbors that you sell on eBay and help people make money and get rid and pare down their homes. That's the way I've got, you know, like nine consignment clients just right here within walking distance. I have a lot of old people who live around me. This is the neighborhood I actually grew up in. I had to move back two houses away from my mother because she had dementia and we had to start taking care of her and it was a big mess. But anyway, I live on the block I grew up with. So all these people I've known for, for years and years and years and years and years. And so whenever I tell them, well, whenever I told the first one or two that I sell things on eBay, that's what I do to help people clear out their homes. I just thought of that the first time and they said, oh, can we use you? And so they just loaded me up with all those pocket knives and everything over the next several weeks. And I just had an instant inventory, and so will you. You really want elderly neighbors to know that you sell on eBay. They're looking to size down. You're looking to size up. They generally have a little better stuff than someone that's just starting out playing house. And keep that in mind as a consignment tip if you want to do consignment. I strongly suggest that you do. Well, the very first consignment I did, a lady was throwing away some bubble wrap. I was She actually lives across the street from my mother's house at the time. Mother doesn't live there, but this lady did. And we had just moved in the neighborhood, but I knew this lady from decades ago, you know, and she was throwing away all these air pillows. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I saw her putting them in her trash can. Wait, wait, Carrie, don't do that. And I ran up to her and I said, I can really use those because... I ship a lot on eBay. That's what we do. We sell on eBay. And she said, oh, really? Well, we've got a ton of Harley Davidson stuff. Do you think that would sell? And I probably said, I think it would. Hopefully I said it that way. Hopefully I didn't say yes, you know, and start drooling because Harley Davidson can really do well. You need to always be on the lookout for Harley Davidson. Now, 
I didn't really want to overdo it because sometimes, you know, like anything, there's a lot of Harley that just doesn't sell well, a lot of Harley t-shirts that aren't that good, a lot of them that are, and so you'd have to be careful. Well, over the years, two or three years since then, I've sold a lot of their Harley stuff. They used to ride all the time, their hogs, and they they don't anymore. They got too old to do it, and and all of this stuff was just gathering dust. With Harley, not only look for it, I want you to be careful about something that some e-bears, some public e-bears have, have made known. And that is, if you need to make sure that if you sell anything with Harley Davidson on it, do not put it in the title unless Harley Davidson actually made it. If Harley Davidson, if it's a Harley Davidson ball cap, then sell it and be thrilled. It was actually a Harley product. But if you've got a ball cap or a, a jacket, a leather jacket, and someone's put a Kawasaki patch, does Kawasaki even make motorcycles anymore? I don't know, probably not. But anyway, Kawasaki patch and a Honda patch and a Harley Davidson patch, well, that's just someone who put patches on his coat. And if you say that's a Harley, if you put Harley Davidson in the title with that coat, Harley's going to tell eBay to Vero, take that down. Don't sell that. That's not one of our products. Harley doesn't want to be known as someone who has made a product that is inferior to their superior products. Most of the products are superior. So always look for Harley as long as it's actually a Harley item. And this was an item off of his, the ladies, one of their motorcycles and I don't know, it's still in the box. I didn't know anything about it. I don't know anything about motorcycles. I used to have one as a kid, but I don't know anything about them really. But it sold very easily, 45 bucks, no big deal. Always look for Harleys. Here's a Game Informer magazine for $5.10. What a lousy sell. This is from Del Crane's estate. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw that up. And it sold for $5.10. I'm gonna slide it into a poly mailer and mail it, okay? I don't wanna mess with $5 items, even for consignment clients. But if they're consignment clients that give me Del Crane, Stan Lee letters to Del Crane worth hundreds of dollars, I'm gonna sell her $5 items as well. Now, if there were a lot of these, I would have batched them up. Keep in mind, old magazines do well. Game magazines, just about any old magazines, decorate interior decorating magazines. Anytime you can lot up a bunch of magazines, they only had this one, but anytime you can lot up a bunch of vintage magazines, you should look them up on eBay and see if they sell. They almost always will. Warning, warning, warning. You cannot ship magazines via media mail. Don't try it. You can't ship comic books by media mail either. You cannot use media mail for anything that has one advertisement in it. So not one magazine, not one comic book, nothing. Everyone competing against you is going to be sh is going to be telling their buyers they will ship by media mail and they will. They will try until they get caught and then they never will again. It's a federal offense. Don't do that. You need to know that. Don't ship anything by media mail that has an advertisement. Only media items such as CDs, laser discs, records, tapes, and books, okay? There's one other I'm gonna show you in a second. This was a Nikon pair of binoculars. I know nothing about binoculars. The item actually did not have Nikon on, on it anywhere. How did I know it was a Nikon since I don't know anything about binoculars? I looked up the word Micron, M-I-K-R-O-N, which was stamped on the binoculars, and I saw everyone on eBay was saying these are Nikon. Didn't make sense that Nikon didn't brand them. Nikon is a brand that wants to be proud of itself. Well, the thing is, Nikon, well, this was back decades and decades ago. Nikon wasn't all that big of a deal. Certainly not like today, a Nikon camera or something like that. So Nikon just didn't brand this. Micron was probably some one of their businesses. And boy, today Nikon would put their name on it, even if it was one of their sub businesses. But I just learned by looking at sold comps that Nikon appeared to be very much a part of these. And sure enough, whenever I Googled it, this company, it was created by Nikon and it was ran by Nikon for the years that these binoculars would have been created. So they sold very fast with the name Nike. The first word in every title should be your brand if it's a well-branded product. And that's why these sold $33. I think I could have gotten a little bit more. They sold very quickly, like within a couple of days. They had the case and the binoculars. Probably these were about $45, but I just wanted to get rid of them. It's fine. Tupperware, $5.99. Why would I sell a piece of Tupperware? Well, my wife sourced a bunch of Tupperware one time, and this item was a lid to a 
beverage container. It was a handle to a beverage container, and there was a spare beverage contain container handle with this beverage container. So we sold the beverage container months ago for, I don't know, 25, 35, I don't know, whatever it was worth selling. And then we had this spare handle. So what do you do? Well, you sell it separately. I mean, what's that going to be? It's going to be, again, throwing it in a poly mailer and shipping it. No fragile, no bubble wrap, no nothing. So just get another $5.99, less eBay fees, plus a little bit of shipping, because I always charge a little bit of service fee of $55, $65, 75 cents on shipping. You can too, that's perfectly fine. You get your tape and your boxing back and whatever your shipping supplies. And eBay, if you have a promoted listings, they take some of that out of your shipping. So it's reasonable to charge a reasonable handling fee on your shipping. So I probably made $5.40 40 cents on this because my buyers all pay shipping $5.40, $5.30. It was just a bonus $5 bill over the thing that we sold for a lot of money, for relatively a lot of money. So sure, I'm going to throw that out as well. It finally sold. These are two books, Treasury of David, Charles Spurgeon. He's a famous, very famous pastor, preacher from the 1800s. Jerry Falwell, very famous preacher from the 1900s. And these were two books that Spurgeon wrote, Charles Spurgeon wrote, about David, the King David, and so very quickly, I want to tell you about religious books or Christian books or Jewish books, that sort of thing. I don't really like the word religion, but it does apply. <laughs> Obviously, religion is, Christianity is a religion, and this is about Christianity and or Charles Spurgeon was a Christian pastor, so he would have brought in David's tea, writings from the Bible all about, you know, how it relates to us today as Christians. And Jerry Falwell signed these, so he must have been, I don't know how he signed it, but we ran across these books. The bottom line for you is these types of books generally sell pretty well, even without someone's signature. So you, if you find Bibles or books of hardback books or even leather-bound books especially, bonded leather Bibles almost always sell very fast for a surprisingly amount of money. Now, these are just two hardback books but it's got Spurgeon, it's got Charles, Spar Charles Jerry Falwell, so you've got those two brands in a way. With a book, you want to put the title of the book first. Someone was looking for this two-volume set. I believe my wife got these for a dollar a piece. That's usually what people charge for these types of books. Christian books, religious books, they usually charge 50 cents a dollar for a Bible, 50 cents a quarter. They usually don't charge much at all at any sale, including a lot of thrift stores will give away one Bible. You know, if you find one and you want it, they'll let you have one. You pay for anything after one. And they just don't charge much for religious books. They sell very well on eBay, these types of books. Of course, you've got to check comps. But keep in mind, Bibles in very good condition, especially bonded leather covers, they do very well. Bibles that are very old might. You might want to do some comps. Old, old Bibles don't necessarily mean they're valuable. Next item, a bunch of wood carving knives. My neighbor down the street, the, the pocket knife guy, he just gave me a whole bucket of carving knives. So I put them together in lots of, in, in four lots. So this is my first lot. I just wanted to see how it did. I didn't know what to ask. They were not branded. He said he made a couple or three of them. So I just asked $21.79, saw what happened. They sold in a day. So Batch number two is going to be for like $45, and I'll see if it sells. I just don't know what these are worth. It's hard to look up comps for knives that might be some are handmade, none have branded. It's kind of hard to tell this, but I'm certainly asking more than $21.95 next time. A player piano. I Someone gave me a huge tub of player piano rolls, those things, the old player pianos, you know, and they sell pretty well to a niche audience who still have player pianos and keep them going and all of that. 697s, not very much. Most of them sold for $12, $13. Most of them sold all of the songs that you would recognize, even old songs you would recognize, like Bicycle Built for Two, anything like that, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s for a player piano. You know, they'll sell for $12, $15, $18. And all of those sold, I've only got a few, left. you can even... You can even see some of them back there on the lower shelf, those dark boxes with a white label. Those are what I have left, and they're very slow, and probably all of those are from $7 to $12 a piece, and it'll take me a long time to sell those, but the entire batch was free, and I've made hundreds of dollars off the first 
50 or 60 of those. So I'm happy to just let these others play out. Why would I even list one that I don't think is going to bring more than 7 or $8? Once you list one item, all of these are in their box. They're player pianos. They all have the same label, basically. They're all basically the same. All you have to do is take pictures of the next one and change the title and change the condition. You've already got a cell similar from the first one. The first one or two is the hardest. After that, it's real easy to list the same types of items over and over. So this is another reason why sometimes I'll sell a pretty low dollar item. I certainly think $7 is way too low. I would, if I found a $7 player piano, and that's, if someone gave me this player piano roll, and it's the only one I had for $7, I wouldn't have sold it. There's no way I would have messed with that. But I had 100 in this huge box, or 50 or 75, so I just, yeah, I'll mess with it because once you write up one listing, the rest is easy. These are some shoes, brand new shoes, Dr. Comfort, any type of comfort shoes, they do very well, Crocs, things like that. These sold $47.99, diabetic again, kind of a kind of a medical type of shoe in a way, but they don't require prescription. People are always looking for them. Red, this is an unusual color. So my wife bought them probably for a dollar and a half or so at a garage sale, and they were they looked like new. It looked like no one had ever worn them. And so, yeah, of course, we're going to sell those. That's a, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Next item, a Bible, King James Bible. This new King James. This is a little tiny pocket Bible. Pocket Bibles do well. If they're, if they're bonded leather, they do even better. If they're red leather, they do even better. So red letter means all of the words of Jesus are in red, if it includes the New Testament. And the fact it fits in someone's pocket, that's a big plus. The fact this is bonded leather, that's a big plus. And this was a beautiful Bible. It looked like it had hardly ever been used. And it sold for 14 And I didn't ask enough for it. I guarantee you I didn't. I've sold a lot of these before. What I used to do with these, I find these all the time. You'll find these all the time. They have little snaps on them. I wish I had one to show you. Little tiny pocket knives. They're, they're thicker than you might think. They're about an inch thick because it's the entire Bible. It's not just the New Testament or Psalms or something. But they're about an inch thick, but they're very small. And so You'll, find, you'll run across these. They have a snap and they open up kind of like a diary. Someone's diary would have a snap that open up or a key. These are snapped, but these sell very fast. I used to list these on Facebook Marketplace even when I was doing heavy eBay. I've always done heavy eBay, but I would list them on Facebook Marketplace for a $10 bill and next day I'd be meeting someone and they'd be handing me $10. But yeah, for $10, I don't even know that I want to drive to Quick Trip. So I listed it for 14 and I got it plus shipping and probably next one I'll probably just a little bit higher but I don't want to list these too much. They're they're easy sales, easy ship, throw it in a bubble mailer, ship it out, media rate, no big deal. Speaking of media rate, yes you can sell Bible, you can ship Bibles media rate. Also, I meant to tell you you can ship piano rolls media rate. Piano rolls were like the CD music of 1920, okay? You'd buy a roll and you'd get a song. You'd just have this song on this piece of paper. These legally ship by media mail. If you look up the rules for media mail on the postal website, you will see piano rolls, player piano rolls, are allowed to be shipped by media mail. So I can ship these for very inexpensively. And what I have done, because I'm down to the last, I don't know, 20 or 30 that will probably be under $20. I've run a promotion on these that said, if you buy three or more, I will give you free shipping because it's media rate shipping. That's the cheapest shipping possible. So if they'll buy three or more and get these things off my hands, then I'll ship them to them free. It's good for me, good for my buyer. Gets rid of them. For some reason, no one's taken me up on it. I don't understand. No one's ever done that, ever. Even when I had more expensive ones, no one did that. But keep in mind, you can do things like that with piano player piano rolls, and you will find these. You will find player piano rolls. You will. All right, the Bible. Here's another Bible. We sell Bibles all the time. Why? Because we have a lot of Bibles. Why? Because anytime we're outsourcing, we know Bibles should be looked at seriously. If they're in good condition, especially if they're bonded leather, and it will say on the back of the Bible if it's bonded leather, especially if it's red leather, then it's probably one you want to source, and you can almost always get it. 50 cents or a dollar. And here's just another one, 24 bucks. This is a little pocket Bible. It's very thin. It's only the New Testament and Psalms, nothing else. No Old Testament. So it's probably a half inch thick, quarter inch thick, something like that. 
fits in someone's pocket. Leather, bonded leather. How did I know that? It said it was bonded leather on the back of the Bible. Again, that's where it usually is. This was, let me see, red leather. So the words of Jesus were in red. If this weren't red leather, letter, I have a feeling it would have sold for 24 and It was brand new. I could say it was brand new open box because I didn't have a box, and but it had never been opened, basically. So this, your, your Bibles and things, easy money. Know what to look for. Leather, great. If not, that's okay. Red leather, great. If not, that's okay. Very small. People love that for their purse or their pockets or whatever. Great. If not, still, Bibles sell generally very well. Bibles are something to bolo. Be on the look. Be on the lookout for. These are clock movements. Water clock movements. I have no idea. These were gold, six gold. What look like clocks, but they don't. They don't have faces. They don't have hands. They don't wind. They have nothing. They've got these holes that look like I would wind there, but there's no key to wind them. I don't know what they're for. Obviously, they're for someone who works on clocks and makes clocks or something like that. My neighbor with the pocket knives, he said, I've got these six things. I don't know what they are. I said, well, let me try it. And so I listed them and knew nothing about them, looked at comp. I didn't even know they were called clock movements. I had to do a Google image, take a picture of them through Google image and find out that's the name. I found some for sale on eBay. I found some that had been sold on eBay. I then did a sell similar and I listed them and I said, untested. So if these things are worth $60 or $70, I can't ask that because I don't know if they work. I don't know. They were a little bit dusty. I didn't want to clean them. They may not be worth anything. Someone may get them and they may not work. So I just untested. We don't know much about this. Here's a tip for you when you list something that you don't know anything about. Tell your buyer you don't know anything about it. Say, we are doing our best to list this, but we may have made mistakes. If you see anything wrong, please, and do an italics on the word please, click the contact seller button up above and let us know where we made a mistake. We'll immediately correct it. And then at the end, always say, we never want to misrepresent anything we sell to you. You'll find a lot of buyers will help you out. You might think they won't because maybe they want it cheaper and they don't want other buyers to get it before they do or something. I don't find that. I find that buyers that know about these sort of things, they let me know if I've made a mistake or something. That could sell. That could save me a negative feedback. So you just put it all on the line and you'll have to ask a little bit less than something's probably worth, but these six items, six dusty, dirty, may not work, clock movement items, I just threw them up, took good pictures, threw them up on eBay, told everyone my normal line about, I don't know much about these, but if you do and you see something wrong, let us know. We will fix it immediately. We never want to misrepresent anything we offer. And then they sold for $30 in couple or three days. Very fast. Someone wanted these very badly. I was thrilled that he got them. I was thrilled that he got them. I think that's it. That's pretty much what we sold yesterday that we wrapped last night. And this is, I hope you've learned a little bit. I don't like longer videos like this. I don't like here's what sold videos. But looking over all this stuff, I saw that it would be possible to give you a lot of training throughout this that wouldn't ever pop up anywhere else. Anytime you have questions or comments, please post them below. I answer every single question and comment. I appreciate that. I always, always look here first. We have a Facebook group, The Ultra Advanced eBay Guy. Feel free to join. Everyone has a lot of fun. You'll see things there that you'll never see here on the YouTube channel just because the nature of Facebook allows us to do more things. You'll get our free bolo list if you want it. You should want it. It's really good. Even if you know nothing about all these topics, you'll really be able to take this list and go to Garage Sound and go, I want everything here. Whereas no one's here. Everyone's over on those antique clocks and I'm here getting all the money. So keep in mind, I really want to be accessible for you. I do know what I'm doing and I'll help you out.